friends welcome to amazon world so this is the very first time i'm doing a video regarding uh, this like teaching or telling or explaining the concepts this is my very first time to do a video like that so comparing to my other videos you will find this one uh, uh, this one as odd so i don't know whether i will be able to put uh, more videos regarding this but i'll try my level best so in this video i'll be explaining i'll be explaining the study note number 9 of financial accounting hire purchase and installment system and i'll be explaining everything in english i don't know whether you guys will be able to understand it or not but i will try my level best to make the concepts clear for you so we can just skip this first portion i'm going directly to this portion where this particular hire purchase and installment system the differentiates so just uh, let's just get straight to it Uh, once we are going through this box, you will be able to understand the difference between installment, sale, and you also and you will be able to understand what exactly a hire purchase is. It is completely different from installment sale in the basis of ownership. That is, in hire purchase, the ownership of the asset is only passed to the buyer. Only after paying uh, after a certain time. Only after a certain time will the ownership of this asset will be passed to the buyer. In the case of higher purchase, that is what we are saying in the first point. But in installment sale, the ownership is passed to the buyer at the time of the sale. But in higher purchase, it takes a certain time. For example, in most of the questions, uh, it is uh, or most of the cases, it is passed to the buyer when the buyer pays the higher vendor the last installment. Okay, only then will the ownership of this particular asset will be transferred to the higher purchaser. So that is the very first point. And the next point is default in making payment. That is, if a uh, buyer made a default, a uh, buyer made a mistake while or buyer uh, didn't give uh, installment one of the installment to the uh, higher vendor. Uh, the higher vendor can repossess. Repossess means can take that asset back. That is what the seller does in higher purchase. But in installment sale, the seller doesn't have the right to uh, take back the asset as we have already transferred the ownership to the buyer at the time of the sale itself. So the seller doesn't have any right to take back that asset. He can only go to court uh, and sue him. There is nothing much the seller can do. But in the case of high purchase, the seller can repossess the asset if that person made any default, when, uh, default in payment. And the next point is right of sale or otherwise. That is in high purchase system, the higher when, sorry, the higher purchaser doesn't have the right to uh, sell the assets which he already bought from the higher vendor. Because uh, in the case of higher purchase, the case of higher purchase, the higher uh, higher purchaser doesn't have the right to sell the asset or uh, yes sell the asset to another person just for example for example this uh, this is a higher vendor and this is a higher purchaser a is a higher vendor b is a higher purchaser and c is another person c is another person so what happens is that a is higher vendor and b is higher purchaser this b without like uh, the ownership will be passed only at the uh, la when the uh, higher purchaser pays the last installment. So till now the ownership of that asset is uh, so uh, till now the ownership of the asset is uh, held by the A itself that is higher vendor itself. So without even transferring this ownership, this B what uh, happened was that the B uh, this B sell this asset to to another person called C. So B doesn't have the right to sell this asset to the C uh, another person without even having the ownership. So that is what they're saying the uh, higher purchaser doesn't have the right to sell this asset to another person. But in the case of installment system since uh, the ownership is passed in the time of sale itself the buyer has the right to sell i mean right to sell this asset 
to another person that is what they say in their third point and the fourth point is that if anything happened to this asset if uh, any damages happened of any losses happened in the case of higher budgets happened to the asset like any loss or damages happened to the asset in the case of higher purchase the seller the higher vendor have to take the responsibility when when the buyer takes reasonable care if the if it is said that the buyer had taken reasonable care there is nothing much we can do the seller himself the higher vendor himself have to take the responsibility but in case of installment system the buyer has to take the responsibility because we have already transferred the ownership to uh, the buyer at the time of sale itself so now from that moment onwards this buyer has to take care of his goods so that is what they say so uh, just read this four points it is actually very easy. I don't know whether you guys understood it or not, but I have tried my level best to make this concept clear for you. So we are directly getting into the illustration number one. Illustration number one. Um, when rate of interest, total cash price, and installments are given. This is actually a pretty easy question. These types of questions can be ex uh, expected for uh, in the section B and all because um, since it is a very easy question. In this question, they have already given interest, total cash price, and installments and all. And so let's get straight to the illustration number one. X purchases a car on high purchase system on January 1st, 2011. Okay. The total cash price of the car is 4,50,000. So the cash price is 4,50,000. The cash price of the car is 4,50,000. Payable 19,000 down. 19,000 down. This amount is down payment. 19,000 is the down payment uh, amount of down payment and three installments of one lakh seventy thousand one lakh fifty thousand one lakh eight one lakh eight thousand four sixty so these three are the installments payable at the end of first second and third year respectively so the, uh, they are payable on the end of the years like uh, since he bought this car on high purchase system on January 1st, 2011. The end of 2011, that is 31st December 2011, 31st December 2012, 31st December 2013. That is how he is paying the installment. Okay. Interest is charged at 10% per annum. So they have already given us the rate of interest. You are required to calculate interest paid by the buyer to the seller each year. So we have to calculate the interest paid by the buyer that is the higher purchaser to the higher vendor in each year following table is useful for calculating so let's get straight on how we are doing this so here uh, in january 1st 2011 the opening uh, opening balance of cash price lies is four lakh fifty thousand it is for four lakh fifty thousand we uh, bought this car but we are not completely paying this for entire for like 50,000 at once. We are paying it in a high, uh, higher purchase, uh, sorry, in installment basis. So the very first time he paid the down payment 19,000. Okay. So 19,000 is towards to cash price. We paid 19,000. This 90,000 is towards, uh, is paid towards the cash price. So that's why they are written here payment towards principal or the cash price. Now we have to calculate interest. The very first time, like in January 1st, there will be no interest. But the end of the year, there will be interest. So let's see how it goes. So the operating balance is 450000 Now we have to pay 450000 uh, That is the cash price of that particular car Mr. X purchased. So he gave 90000 as down payment. This down payment is towards... Uh, is paid towards the cash price so that's we wrote it under here so that we can it, it will be very easy for us to understand uh, so that's why they have uh, it will be very easy for you uh, to if you're going to follow the method or uh, the box wise method followed by our textbook so it is it is very easy and convenient for you to understand uh, there will be no confusions here so this uh, the box this box every amount in this box is paid towards the cash price is paid towards the principal and the, every amount in this box is paid towards the interest okay and this is the installment okay that's it so once we get the questions very first thing we have to do is that we have to calculate all these three that is one lakh seventeen thousand plus one lakh fifteen thousand plus 
one like eight thousand four sixteen. We have to just add all this together, uh, and less nineteen thousand. So when we add all this together, you will get five lakh eighteen thousand four sixteen. That is not equal to four lakh fifty thousand, isn't it right? So what can we guess from this? That is. This one lakh seventy thousand, one lakh fifty thousand, and one lakh eight thousand four sixty are the amount that includes interest plus principal. This one lakh seventy thousand includes seventeen thousand, right? One lakh seventy thousand includes principal uh, amount towards principal and also the amount towards interest. So that is what we. Calculated. The very first thing we have to do once we get the question is that if they given us the amount of installments, we have to just add it all together, uh, and we have to check whether that sum is equal to this four lakh fifty thousand, which is the cash price. We have to uh, compare it with the cash price. If the amount is equal to cash price, then we can say it will be very easy for us to directly uh, calculate the interest. But in this case, the installment amount does include this interest amount, so we have to. Uh, differentiate them. So, how we are going to differentiate them? So, uh, the four lakh fifty thousand. This is the amount we have to pay right now. We already paid nineteen ninety thousand towards this cash price. So, there is uh, in the very first time there will be no interest. So, the closing balance will be four lakh fifty thousand minus ninety thousand. That is three lakh sixty thousand. Okay. And the next year closing balance, sorry, opening balance will be three lakh sixty thousand, right? Uh, and the installment they have already given us one lakh seventy thousand, so the installment is one lakh seventy thousand. And now we have to find uh, how much is that towards cash price and how much is that towards interest. So how we are going to do that? It is already given in the question that the interest charge is ten percentage per annum. Interest amount will be nothing but three lakh sixty thousand into ten percentage. So we are going like three lakh sixty thousand into ten percentage. You will get thirty six thousand. Now subtract this thirty six thousand from this one lakh seventy thousand, and you will get this one lakh thirty four thousand. Subtract this thirty six thousand from this one lakh seventy thousand, and you will get this one lakh thirty thirty four thousand. In each questions, it it will be very different. In some questions, they will not give us installment amount, but in this question, they have already given us installment amount. That in uh, the installment amounts. So just keep this in your mind. Installment amount will have interest plus principal in it. So this one lakh seventy thousand has interest plus. Uh, Uh, principal in it, and that's why when we subtract this three thirty six thousand from this one lakh seventy thousand, we got the amount to be paid towards this cash price. So we got one lakh thirty four thousand. So once we are uh, subtracting this one lakh thirty four thousand from this three lakh sixty thousand, you're going to get two lakh twenty six thousand. Now that is a closing balance. Uh, so uh, not down the dates. They have already given us. At the end of first, second, and third year. First year means the year which he bought was two thousand eleven. So the first year will be taken as two thousand eleven. End of two thousand eleven is thirty first December two thousand eleven. End of second year is thirty first December two thousand twelve. End of third year is two thousand thirteen December thirty one. Okay. So now the opening balance we are carrying forward is two lakh twenty six thousand to the next year. At the end of the next year, that is two lakh twenty seven twenty six thousand will be the opening balance of the next year. And the installment they have already given us installment in this uh, the question itself. So this one lakh fifty thousand does has interest as well as cash price inside it. So what we have to do is. First of all, go and find the interest, like just like the last time, that is two lakh twenty six thousand into ten percentage, which is twenty two thousand six hundred, and subtract this amount from one lakh fifty thousand, and you will get one lakh twenty seven thousand four hundred. Okay, that is first of all, go and find interest, that is two lakh twenty six thousand into ten percentage. We are going to get twenty two thousand six hundred. Twenty-two thousand. This twenty-two thousand six hundred should be subtracted from this one lakh fifty thousand to get the amount to be paid towards cash price. So we got one lakh twenty-seven thousand four hundred. Now subtracting this one lakh twenty-seven thousand four hundred from this two lakh twenty-six thousand, you're going to get the closing balance at ninety ninety-eight thousand six hundred. Okay, that will be the opening balance of the 
end of the next year, ninety eight thousand six hundred. Okay, so this amount will be right. Uh, so ninety eight thousand six hundred into ten percentage, just like the last time. Go and find the interest. You will get nine thousand eight hundred sixty, and subtracting it from the installment amount, you are going to get the amount to be paid towards the principal or the cash price. That is ninety eight thousand six hundred. So at the end of the last year, last year there will be no there will be no closing balance anymore because we have already paid all the amount, the uh, principal as well as the interest. So uh, some points that you have to keep in the mind is that the installment amount, installment amount will have principal and interest in it. Okay, and then we have to find the interest on the operating balance from the operating balance. That is another thing we have to keep in your mind, and that's it. So this is how we are doing illustration number one. Thank you so much.